Hey everyone, VHC2D here. Um, yeah, I know. I, I know you don't have to say anything. I haven't made a tutorial in a long time. And you probably don't care. But, um, I'm going to go over in basic hammer usage with all the tools and oh, pretty much everything that I know in hammer, I guess. Yes? Alright. Okay, there we go. Okay, um, I guess for starters, this is the selection tool, Shift S. Pretty much, you select something if it's there. Alright, cool. Now, this is the magnifying tool. This um, really isn't used anymore. This will be just for uh, purposes in 3D. It was used to zoom in and zoom out because when Valve made Half-Life, um, they didn't have the zoom in, zoom out with the scroll wheel. Okay. Alright. And this is the camera tool. People use it to move around, move around in the 3D view and holding down, uh, holding down left mouse will look around and holding down right mouse will have yourself looking around. I don't really like it though. I like using Z to start your flying mode and WSAD around. And this is the entity tool. You find an entity and you place it. That If you place it on the 3D view it will be in the ground. So when placing an entity and you want it somewhere exact when you first bring it up use the uh... use the grids and delete key obviously and this is the brush tool as you mostly already might know but if you don't that's the brush tool you use it to create all your walls and use it to just make every piece of brush you will have on your map unless you have a prefab and you can copy stuff like I just did. Hold shift, click and drag, make sure to let go of click first. And this is the toggle texture application, shift A. Uh, I don't really use the uh, keyboard shortcuts for the tools, but this is to pretty much texture. Well, this is how you align textures and everything. This is how you will do it and to change textures of certain faces hit browse and hit apply and then you uh, right click to change another face with the same and if your brush well you always want the x and y scales to be one your shift rotation can be anything and most of the time you want face even if both get checked it's still going to be on face if any if you place a decal on a brush texture that is not face it will be backwards and this is the brick tool apply current texture which if you see this texture and you hit the brick tool oh man you no yeah you highlight whatever you're gonna change the texture to hit the brick tool changes it all every single face and this is the decal tool which you find your decal I'm on what, what, what is this okay okay it's crap Hammer's going real slow with the recorder decal. You place it. Easy as that. And with hammer 3.5.1 you get the thing to click on because decals are super hard to click on. So you can click on that and it is easily easy to pick up the decal. And this is the carve or cut clipping tool. Shift X. Now this is a pretty good tool a lot when you need to make angles hold shift X to change the mode 
the red means it'll be cut off and none and when it's all white it'll just mean it will just make a cut there and you could delete it later or something and this is the vertex manipulation tool which I'm not even very good at and I don't like to use it because I mess up my map all the time but it is very good when making stuff like that and this last but not least the path tool which does work if you have ever heard rumors that it doesn't it's very hard to use because it's stupid I don't remember how it works but I got it to work once I don't know how but it does work it just makes a path for a train to follow but you'd be better off placing path corners and path tracks and these are peer um, that shows the grid I don't know that does that makes the grid larger and smaller which you could also use the bracket keys and oh this is um, this can save how your windows are set up and that's to load it and that's to save it carve selected objects uh, that's the same thing as just going to carve so uh, if you wanted to carve make um, a hole right there you highlight that click carve and now there's a big hole in there but you know sometimes it's better to make it yourself instead of carving it because I don't know just sometimes and this is an ignore groups you can s if one brush is whole you can select its certain sectors with ignore groups and if you want multiple items to be next or they might not be next to each other but you want them to still be moved in relation to each other you hit the group button and now if I select that it'll select the other one without it being like a entity fuck wall ah, fuck wall. funk wall that was funny wasn't it now it just hit ungroup and it's not grouped together and these are the hide selected objects I don't know what hide unselected unselected objects does but these entities or these brushes still exist you just don't see them and when you hit show all this groups there they are and that creates a vis group for things so if I selected all this it would make one vis group if I hide, hid them four groups there you go and this is just the cut tool cut uh, copy paste toggle core I don't know what those do select by select I don't know what those do I don't mess around with those really but I do have toggle auto selection and texture lock. If you don't have texture lock, and let's see, put this on a rotation. Sort of like, if you move this, see how like the texture is like staying in one spot and not following with it. Well, if you have texture lock, it moves with the uh, brush, which is probably good. Texture alignment, um, don't know but this last one run map f9 yeah that's compiling it and well, what was it well that was there there was something else but I don't remember and you never want to use hollow I'll tell you that if you hit make hollow it just messes up well you could use it if you're not really making a map you just need a box because it messes up with the grids and sometimes it doesn't align but right now it seems to be aligning uh... Hmm. yeah okay um... redo undo grid settings smaller bigger grid you want snap to grid it's it's good and load point file that's usually what you do to find leaks and you would load a p 
TTS or something, something with that extension, and it'll draw up all these wires and not wires, but like lines, and wherever the red is is usually where the leak is. And entity report that shows you all the entities in the map. Yay, info play deathmatch. So map properties is where you title, sky name, CD track to play, all that good stuff. Um, check for problems. There's no player start because I don't have an info play start. It just it doesn't find every single problem. Like if there's a leak, it won't tell you in the map problems because it doesn't know until you compile it. But uh, I really don't mess around with any of that. This is all stuff on the uh, over here. Oh yes, and when you are in the selected something from the uh, point tool, if you click it, it'll change modes for what you can do with it. You can rotate it. You can stretch it. And that's about it. But it's is is very useful. But um yeah, that's what you can do with that. And uh um uh we go into the options, game configurations, you should already know that. Two D views, um crosshair cursor. I'm not sure. I don't use it. Uh, display scroll bars. That'll just uh, put scroll bars in your grids. I don't use that. If you want to do the same options, you can. Arrow keys, nudge, selected object vertex. You use arrow keys. Reorient primitives on creation in the active 2V, 2D view. Uh, I do that. It makes um, anything you make, it will put it facing you or something. I don't know. I use it though. Automatic infinity selection in 2D. Um, yeah, you want that. And default to 15 root. I already said that, but if you're rotating something and you're not on default, it goes 15 degrees. And when you're not on default, you could mess up. Mess up. Stupid hammer being not responsive. You can me stop working. Hold on, I'm gonna pause this. Um, hammer's stupid. I don't know why it crashed. But uh if you're wondering why my background is blue, you can change your background color to anything you want. I don't know. I chose blue. I was using gray for a while, and then I chose blue. Just cause it's funny to me. Uh that's pretty much it. You can flip objects when they're selected from here. Um, textures, 3D views, forward speed, you can change that to be a lot, and I'll just put this for perspective. You can fly really fast past things, and if it's at 100, you're gonna go really slow. Know what I'm saying? So, um, I don't know, I guess that is it for this tutorial. It wasn't, uh, much of an, of an exciting tutorial, but, um, I really don't get that many requests. I know I just got one. Um, uh, I don't remember what it was for, but I remember that I read it was pretty easy. Ah, uh, you know what, I'll go, I'll go look at it right, right, right now. Yeah. Tutorial how to make a train that you ride in the beginning of Half Life. Yes. Very easy. Um Pong Yep. I will do that uh later. I no, I mean I will do it. But uh I don't know when it'll be. Probably, you know, sometime soon, hopefully. But I hope that this tutorial helped you and to further your adventures in Hammer. Have a good one. Hey guys, are you embarrassed by that flattened, deflated look?